Well, hello there. This is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. We are still in our series called Love Poems from God, 12 Sacred Voices from the East and West. And today I wanted to give you a little background on our next sacred voice, who is St. Francis of Assisi. And the quote uh, that I'll start with is, no one lives outside the walls of this sacred place, existence. Francis Bernadoni is the most beloved saint of the Western world. His love for nature and his hymns to the sun, moon, earth, and birds have captured the hearts of millions of Catholics and the respect of millions of people of all faiths. This saint achieved the highest state of consciousness available to man, a divine union with God. Francis was born in 1182 in Assisi in central Italy into the family of a wealthy linen merchant. In his youth, he enjoyed all the privileges of such a station in life and was said to have especially loved parties. The end of the 12th century was a time of political turmoil and as Francis grew to manhood, he began to embrace the ideals of medieval chivalry as depicted in the Troubadour's songs, influencing him to seek a military career as a knight. He was captured and imprisoned after his first battle between Assisi and Perugia and returned home a year later very ill. Recovered, he determined to enlist again, this time fighting for the Pope in the Crusades. The Crusades brought Francis to the Middle East, and there are accounts that St. Francis was in contact with Rumi's master, Shams, while Francis was in Damascus. Francis had many visions in his life, and it was around this time that one of these visions made him realize a military career was not for him. He returned home and began a new life on fire with love for God. He began to devour he began to devote himself to helping the impoverished and the afflicted. It is said that he embraced and kissed a leper, experienced a baptism of joy, and triumph over fear. There are many wonderful accounts of St. Francis. When he was about 25, he would often pray in secluded spots. Once, while in an old country chapel, the painted figure of Christ on the crucifix spoke to him, saying, Francis, go and repair my house, which, as you see, is falling completely to ruin. Thus his dense destiny began to unfold. Another story that may be unfamiliar to some readers is that sometimes when Francis was traveling with his brother monks, he would pick up a stick and pretend it was a violin bow, and his arms a violin, and he would start playing the violin and singing French songs that his mother had taught him as a child. Francis would leap about and dance and become ecstatic. It was said of St. Francis that his love for God at times made him so wild that few understood him. In many churches around the world, one of the happiest Sundays is St. Francis Day, when people bring their animals to the church to be blessed. St. Francis' life was a great blessing to all, and his spiritual beauty, power, and compassion will always offer us guidance. So let me give you a couple of his poems to, to end our day together. First one is called, Because He Gave Birth. So precious is a person's faith in God. So precious. Never should we harm that. Because he gave birth to all religions. This next one is called, When I Returned Home when I returned from Rome. A bird took flight, and a flower in a field whistled at, whistled at me as I passed. I drank from a stream of clear water, and at night the sky untied her hair, and I fell asleep, clutching a tress of gods. When I returned from Rome, all said, tell us the great news. And with great excitement I did. A flower in a field whistled, and at night the sky untied her hair, and I fell asleep clutching a sacred dress. Thanks so much for stopping by. 
if you want to hear the rest of our series, we started with Rabia um, of the Sufi tradition. Just go back into my archives and um, you'll find them all there.